Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You will be listening to the Word of God from Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo, Senior Pastor of Grace Chapel International, Mataheko. He delivers to you the incorruptible Word of God with clarity and anointing. He yeah. says in Deuteronomy 8.18 that remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you what? Power to get wealth. And one of the meaning of that word power is that He gives you ideas. You came to my rescue. Almighty God will bring enlargement into your life. It's a time to think big and have a big vision because your God is the God of enlargement. Everybody, put your two hands together. So, let me ask you, how do you get a vision for your life? How did Moses, who has never been to Canaan, he even died, he never stepped there. But how could he describe Canaan in such vivid terms? Because he was in the presence of God. Because he talked to God, God talked to him. So similarly, if you have fellowship with God, he will not leave you without a vision. Say amen to that. If you move with God, he wouldn't leave your life empty. He will surely tell you something about your future, about what he will he wants to make out of your life. I'll give you another example. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. After Jesus met Peter, you know, Peter, Peter fished the whole night and he didn't catch anything. He was going to go home. Very poor, broke, frustrated fisherman. But then he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And after he submitted himself to the Lord Jesus, Jesus told him, cast your net again into the sea, in the deep side. And Peter did. And then suddenly, he caught a large, uh, what the, what's the word for it? Shoal of fish. S-H-O-A-I. Okay. He caught a large shoal of fish. And he was so flabbergasted. He was so overwhelmed that from, uh, from failure to, to what? To success within how many minutes? Within about 20 minutes. But you know, with God, nothing is impossible. That is why we preach to you in the house of God here. Yeah, transformation can take place in your life. Any moment, just hook to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will not leave you the way you are now. He's always working transformation in our life. So Peter was so overwhelmed that he fell down at Jesus' feet. And all that he could say is that Jesus... Go away from me. This is too much for me. Then Jesus told him, Peter, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Because of the encounter with the Lord Jesus that morning, that morning, Jesus asked him, Give me your boat. I want to stand in your boat and preach. Because the people who have gathered to hear Jesus preach, they were so large in number that they were pressing on Jesus. 
and he needed to get away from them about 10 feet, have an altar, and preach to the people. So he said, Peter, give me your boat. Row your boat into the sea small. And what did Peter do? He yielded. He yielded. So Peter was having an encounter with Jesus. It started with his obedience. It started with his willingness. It started with his generosity to give his boat to Jesus to use. So after Jesus used his boat, I forgot, the Bible says he is a rewarder. He is what? A rewarder. Nobody works for him and he will say, I won't pay you. Anyone who is serving the Lord in this house, there is a reward for him. And the reward does not come from me. It comes from God. I may determine something to be given to you, but don't be fooled. Look to God for your reward. Anyone who wants to be in the evangelism department, go on evangelism, do this, do that for the house of God. The Bible says he is a rewarder. Let's all read together. Ready, go. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So this morning, if you are seeking God, he will reward you. If you come to church with a hungry heart to receive something from God, God will reward you before you go. Some of you, you should be catching the vision for your life. Now, 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 as I am preaching. But some people too can come to church just like that too, without a hunger and a passion, without looking to receive anything from God. For you, I can't say what will happen to you. But those who are diligently seeking him and they are here this morning, may God reward you with a vision for your future. So, in rewarding Peter, that is why Jesus said, uh, Jesus did his miracle of transforming his situation from complete failure, complete zero, to a supernatural, miraculous success. So that day, Peter could go home smiling and meet his wife with smile. And the wife will also be surprised and say, hey, I mean, you know wives. The moment the wife saw the, he say, hey, honey. That day she called him honey. And he, oh, today you have tried, oh, oh, but more then. And then Peter will say, Oh, it's, I met a man. I met a man who changed my life. He changed my life. So when Peter knelt before Jesus and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinner, this is what Jesus told him. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Mark 1, 17. Then Jesus said to, to them, Follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. I will make you become fishers of men. So Jesus was giving him what? A vision of what he will become when? In the future. That I will make you become fishers of men. So no wonder on the day of Pentecost, when he preached one sermon under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, how many people came forward? 3,000. Because Jesus told him three and a half years ago that you will become fishers of men. 
He said, you are fishing now. That's good. You are getting fish now. But what heaven has in the volume concerning your life is that you will be fishers of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It didn't happen immediately, but it took walking with Jesus and all being faithful, sticking with him, sometimes making mistakes, but getting up from the mistakes and continuing. And then one day, after Jesus has left, the vision began to unfold. And he knew his purpose in life. It was to fish men for the kingdom of God and bring men into salvation and tell people to leave hell, not to be there, not to be under the domination of Satan and come into the kingdom of God. He took that encounter with the Lord Jesus. So as you come here, when you also have an encounter with the same Jesus Christ, what he will do for you, he will also leave the imprints on your heart of what you will become. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, the agenda which heaven has for your life. Hallelujah. For the Lord God is bringing you into a good land. A good land. A land of waters, hills, valleys, fountains, uh, springs. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. That's the part I like. Oh. Bread without scarcity. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert on top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But don't let your vision all be on the tummy. But uh, Peter's vision is a good one. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Your life will have an impact on other people. Your life will deliver people from hell. Your life will open the gates of salvation to other people. That's a good vision. As for Paul, when he was called, he called it the heavenly vision. Acts chapter 26. Go to Acts chapter 26. You can pick it up from maybe verse 13 or so. Acts 26, verse 13. He said, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the gods. 15, so I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. A vision can be unfolding. I may not know everything right now, but as I start the journey with him, on the vision of my life, he will unfold more things to me. Go on, verse 17. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. That's why they couldn't kill Paul. They tried uh, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. 19. 19. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient. I followed the vision. I pursued the vision. I counted everything as loss. I followed the vision for my life. You know, he was a lawyer. 
he closed the legal chambers, the law chamber, and he followed the vision for his life. One time when they were troubling him, uh, he said, hey, me, I can be a big time lawyer somewhere making a lot of money. He said, look, I count everything as dumb, but I want to know Jesus Christ. So he became so focused on Jesus. This morning, may the same God drop into your heart a vision for your life. But this church also has a vision. And I will pick up the message from next Sunday going on. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning for listening to this brief message on vision. Let's see. Let's see. Turn, ask the person standing next to you, what's the vision? Do you know the vision for your life? <laughs> uh, ask him. Ask her. Ask her to tell you what's the vision for your life. Ask her. Ask her. Do. And if you don't know, feel free. Tell her I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I've been singing with OCB. So I tell him, I don't know, but heaven knows where I'm going. <laughs> oh, you've told him your vision already. <laughs> okay. Close your eyes and pray. Pray to God. Pray, ask God that with this message you have heard, uh, you want to know from him what is what should be the vision for your life what does he want to make you to become 20 years from now where are you going to be asking these questions 20 years from now what should you be doing what does he want you to become what is the agenda what is written in the volume? As for Peter, he told him in one encounter, tell him, you two, you are here. Tell him, Peter is dead and gone, but you are the one here now. So you want to hear from him. What is he making you to be? Come on, be serious with that prayer. Be serious with that prayer. Be serious, brother.
before we go on, if you are here, you haven't given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not yet saved, your sins have not been forgiven you. There's only one thing that can wash your sins away. That is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Trying to be good on your own will not earn you forgiveness of your sins. But when you put your trust in Jesus, when you say, Jesus, I want to receive you as my Savior, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. He will come into your life. He will forgive you your sins. He will put the power of God into your life. But you need to invite him. If this morning, you want to invite him into your life and have him as your savior. Have your sins forgiven. Wherever you are standing, I want you to raise your right hand. As every eye is closed, if you want to give your life to Jesus and be saved and be born again, raise your right hand. If I see your hand up, I will pray with you. The Jesus will come into your heart. Advise the person next to you. Tell him, don't cast off restraint. Tell him or her, there is a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Tell him, hang out with him. And he will give you a vision of your future. What he is making you to become. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Truth Table with Reverend Wisdom Duffy Amapo of Grace Chapel International. We believe you've been blessed even as you have listened. For copies of this message, visit the Grace Bookshop at Grace Chapel International Auditorium, First Light, or call 0244-840-572 or 0202-001-267 and 0207-900-000. And remember to always walk in his amazing grace. Yeah.